In October 1848, a major cholera epidemic broke out, and it raged all the way through 1849. Across England, 54,398 people died, and the General Register Office recorded each one. William Farr found himself with an avalanche of data, not just the deaths themselves, but information on age, gender, where the victims lived, what their professions and incomes were, and how long they had been ill before they died. It was time for him to put what he had learned from Pierre Louis to the test, to see if he could discover anything in the data that might prevent, or at least mitigate, future outbreaks. In 1852, Farr published his Report on the Mortality of Cholera in England, 1848-49, a 500-page volume packed with numbers and analyses. In it, he looked for relationship patterns among the victims and reviewed whether the data supported various theories that had been proposed to explain where the disease came from. Cholera, it appeared, did not discriminate between men and women, young and old, or rich and poor. There was, however, one factor that stood out from the rest. The elevation of the soil in London, Farr reported, has a more constant relation with the mortality from cholera than any other known element. To prove his claim, Farr presented a map of the city showing each region's death rate and its elevation above the River Thames. The mortality from cholera is in the inverse ratio of the elevation, he continued. The mortality of the 19 highest districts was at the rate of 33 in 10,000, and of the 19 lowest districts, 100 in 10,000. Farr even derived a formula for what he called his law of elevation. Farr's report is a landmark in statistics and epidemiology. It also happens to be wrong. There is no law of elevation for cholera or any other disease, and that gives us an important lesson in what we can and cannot learn from statistics. In the mid-1800s, no one knew that diseases were caused by germs. Farr and many others, including Florence Nightingale, believed that they were caused by miasmas, bad-smelling vapors in the air. When Farr saw that there were more cholera cases at lower elevations, closer to the Thames, he interpreted that to mean that the miasmas were coming from the water. In reality, cholera was being caused by bacteria in the water, so the connection to water was right, but Farr's explanation for it was wrong. In later epidemics that came after improvements to London's infrastructure changed how people got their water, the law of elevation no longer worked. So why is Farr's work important, and why should we study statistics if they can fool us into drawing wrong conclusions? The answer is that even if statistics can't give us the right answer, they can still point us in the right direction. When cholera returned to London in 1854, the same outbreak during which Nightingale volunteered at Middlesex Hospital, John Snow used both Farr's method and his idea that the disease was related to water as part of his investigation. Within a few weeks, he traced the outbreak to a well on London's Broad Street. When city officials disabled that well pump, the epidemic stopped. It would be another 30 years before the specific type of bacteria that causes cholera was identified conclusively, but Snow had proven that something in the water had done it, not a miasma coming from the water. As a historical aside, Farr did not accept the germ theory of disease until the mid-1860s. Nightingale took even longer to accept it. As late as the Spanish influenza pandemic of 1918-1919, many people were still trying to treat illness by opening all of their windows to keep bad air from collecting. Nature is complex and chaotic and it is almost impossible to find statistical relationships that prove anything beyond a reasonable doubt. But statistics can give us important clues that lead us in the right direction. They can point us toward the right answers, even if they're not the right answers themselves. Later in their work together, Nightingale chided Farr about mixing statistics with speculation about what might have caused the results, telling him, The statistician has nothing to do with causation. He is almost certain in the present state of knowledge to err. Anticipating his objection, she continued, You complain that your report could be dry. The drier, the better. Statistics should be the driest of all reading. <laughs>